there are days I cry. Um, I can pick up something of hers in the house and I will sit and rock with it and just sob for a little bit. And my husband just says, you'll be okay, sweetheart. Susan Bro's daughter, Heather Heyer, was killed by a white supremacist who drove into a crowd of protesters demonstrating against far right groups in Charlottesville, Virginia in 2017. She had been learning responsible financial management. She was finally at a place where she was starting to save money. And I said, don't die, I'd rather have you than the money. And she said, I'll try not to. But the Charlottesville tragedy wasn't isolated. The Communities Overcoming Extremism Coalition was set up by the city's former mayor to examine and find solutions for a rise in U.S. killings fueled by far-right ideology. The nation saw in one weekend how utterly violent today's extremism really is. Just as extremism emerged from within democracy, democratic norms and institutions can overcome it. Its final report is out a year since 11 people were shot dead inside a Pittsburgh synagogue, allegedly by a man shouting, all Jews must die. Research by the coalition found 78% of extremist killings in 2018 were carried out by white supremacists. For many, U.S. President Donald Trump set the tone for the rise in far-right violence by at first defending those white supremacists who took part in the Charlottesville tragedy before he condemned them. And in this highly polarized political climate, some Democrat opponents hoping to challenge Trump for the presidency next year are now calling him a white supremacist. Susan Bro thinks it's up to communities to change the tone themselves. It's an individual movement. We have to make individual connections. We have to listen to one another. We have to talk to one another. But some experts say the U.S. needs laws on domestic terrorism, similar to those on international terrorism. So security agencies have the powers to track right-wing extremists before they strike. Owen Fairclough, CGTN, Washington.